Today, it is time to talk about some of the most carcinogenic things there are out there. After UV radiation, toxic fumes, and charred meat, we got college essays. Bruh, those things are so cancer. Holy moly, bruh. Those are literally the definition of cancer, and before I started writing college essays, I thought they would be okay, okay? Literally, my friends and I were like, oh, some of these prompts seem kind of interesting. No, they're not, okay? If you try writing a single college essay, you are going to understand that they are disgusting. But sadly, no matter how disgusting college essays are, you still gotta write them, okay? So, we're gonna be talking about all that good stuff. So since juniors, you guys should probably start thinking about college apps now, because they are coming up pretty soon, okay? At least a little bit, okay? I know you guys probably haven't started writing essays or anything, but you should at least think about which colleges you're applying to and all that good stuff. Like, I was kind of inspired by a bunch of juniors who, like, run their own podcast, and they basically invited me to come on, and they, they talked about, like, similar stuff, and they were asking me about college essays and all that, so why not share what I think about it to you guys? And then once they post their podcast, I will also post that in the description too, so you guys gotta hear me talking about college essays twice, let's go. But also, just one more thing I should point out is, like, I'm not, like, qualified to say any of this stuff, right? Like, I'm not an admissions officer, I don't know what admissions officer liked about my essays, but I'm just gonna say what I think, like, turned out well in my essays, the thing that I didn't like about my essays, because, like, admissions officers are people, right? Like, they also have the same ideas of what people like and what they don't like, so this is just my opinion. Don't take it for a fact, okay? Hello everybody, I'm Farrar, and basically what I'm going to be doing today is giving you a couple tips on how to write your essays, basically the process I went through when I had to write my essays, and finally, the actual essays themselves that I sent to MIT and Berkeley. Let's do it! But before we get into the video, one more thing, okay? Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It actually helps me out a ton, okay? And literally every time I remind you guys, you guys leave so many more likes. I appreciate it. But really though, it helps me out a ton, and if you guys want to join the Discord, we're running some competitions now, and we talk about this kind of stuff all the time, so please join the Discord too, it helps me out a ton. Okay, actual stuff, let's go! Alright, so first off, let us get into some tips from me, okay? I had it a bit easy, I will admit, because I did not need to do Common App, let's go! Both MIT and Berkeley have their own portals, so, <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. But I still did have to write, like, 10 essays on, like, pretty different topics, so I think I have an idea of how the college app uh, essay process works, and I've talked to a bunch of my friends, too, and they've basically given me the same advice. So, here are the tips. First, start early, okay? And no, that doesn't mean, like, start, like, two years before you actually get to college apps, okay? No, don't just, like, start, like, in your junior year, like, while you're grinding through school, okay? You can wait, okay? You can wait a little bit. But you should probably start it at least in summer, like, before your college apps are due. Because, obviously, summer, you have a lot more free time. You can at least start thinking about the prompts. And also, like, essays are not easy to come up with. Like, originally, I thought I would be able to pump out an essay every, like, two seconds, okay? Because I I've, I've done a ton of writing. I've done, like, writing for newspaper. I've literally written personal columns a ton, right? And that's literally what your college essays are. But it took me forever to come up with these essays. I spent, like, five hours just to get a first draft done, and then I had to go through, like, a hundred more drafts. It's crazy. Like, at minimum, I went through four drafts, and for, like, the worst essays, I literally had to go through, like, seven or eight. And even coming up with the first draft was insanely hard, dude. I literally spent hours just staring at the paper, not knowing what to write. I couldn't even think of, like, the right way to word things. Okay, Mr. Essay, I say, prepare to be written! I'm doing it! I'm doing yeah. it! Yeah! Yeah! In some of these, in some of these, almost there! And... Done. <sighs> now let's see how it looks so far. The... Break time! It, it was painful, okay? So... If you want to make your essay quality good, you gotta start early. Like, I really started in September, but like, I mean, if you guys don't have as much experience writing, it's probably good to start in summer. That would help you out a ton. Okay, second tip is don't resume spam, okay? I think, I think there's a mistake that a lot of people do because in college essays, you actually have a completely separate section for all your activities, extracurriculars, awards, all that stuff. So there's literally no reason to talk about all your awards and extracurriculars in your essay. It just makes you sound arrogant, it makes you sound like you're just trying to show off in your essays. And that's not the point of the essays, okay? Like, yes, essays should say something about you that's good, right, like, that the admissions officers will like, but the point is not to show off your, like, academic skill or, like, to show all the awards you've gotten. The point of the essay is for the admission officer to get a good idea of what type of person you are, right? Basically, the way I like to think of it are essays are a way to make the admissions officer like you, right? Like, whenever you look at a resume, right, you don't actually like the person, right? You're just like, oh, this guy's pretty insane and all this stuff, right? But by looking at the essays, you can actually see whether you like the person themselves. So instead of being like, oh, I qualify for Yusuko Gold, I love CS so much, holy moly. You should instead say why you like CS, right? Not like what you did to show that you like CS, what you, why you actually like CS. Like for example, you could say, I did this project, it, it came out really cool, and I was like, okay, there's so many cool things you can do with CS, that's why I like it, right? That first off is like personal to you, right? You did a project on it. Second off, it like, it's not just you showing off like some like award or something that you did. 
And also it gives like an actual reason why you like it, not just because you did it and that's why I like it. The reason is that you actually enjoy doing it and you actually like er learn something from it, right? So yeah, don't spam your awards. Just have like some kind of like character trait you want to get across in your essay and then focus on that. Like you can talk about certain like extracurriculars and stuff in your essays, but you should probably focus more on making the admissions officer like you. Okay, the third one, which is kind of part of the second one, kind of, but it's be genuine, okay? <laughs> like, it's really easy to see which essays, like, are not genuine. And basically, whenever you're genuine, the reason why it's good is because it makes you less generic, right? Like, if you try to, like, sound like someone who admissions officers like, everybody's gonna be trying to do that, right? So, like, eventually, you're just gonna sound like everyone else, and you're not gonna stand out, and no, no one's gonna like your essays. So basically, the benefits of being genuine are, like, obviously, you're being genuine, that's, all, like, in itself a good thing, but also, it's really easy to see whether someone's being genuine or not. Like, I've seen people write essays where it's like, I love helping people so much, I saw some, like, person on TV who was, like, really sick, and I was like, oh, I want to help them so much, I'm such a, like, good person. <laughs> like, I mean, sure, maybe, maybe you saw people on TV and made you feel bad, but, like, but if you don't actually feel that way, it's really hard to make it come across that that's actually what causes it. I don't know, it just com it just feels really weird to me when people do that, but it might, maybe it's, maybe it's true for some people. And other people are like, oh, I love CS so much because of all of the intricacies of algorithms, because... Coding is so cool because I like the sound my keyboard makes when they click it. Bro. I don't know. People just like say I like it because X Y Z, right? But the point is, none of that is like specific to you, right? Anybody could say that they like CS because of X Y Z. The idea is you want to give specific experiences and like details that are only for you, right? Like kind of the same thing that I was talking about earlier with like giving a project as an example, right? You could be like, okay, so the reason I like CS is because when like my CS officers were trying to think of cool activities to do. We realized we could just code up our own website and actually make a website for everybody to use. And then after that, you could explain why, right? Like, I like CS because I'm able to make cool things from scratch, like a lot of cool things from scratch. So yeah, get your point across, be genuine, and try to get your own voice across, right? Like, you, you don't want to seem like just a robot that's writing stuff just so that admissions officers get to read, oh, this guy's an X person. You want to get your, like, like personality across in the essays. Like for me, basically how I try to do that, I will admit that I'm not the best at this, but I try to just put in like a couple jokes, like try to make it a little bit humorous, at least at the beginning, and then talk about like more of the serious stuff in the middle and that kind of thing. But dude, the point is, admissions officers have to read thousands of these essays, dude. You want to make your essay like kind of interesting and at least make them kind of happy, okay? Because if admissions officers are in a bad mood when they're reading your essay, you are kind of screwed, okay? So I would personally advocate for like putting in jokes, maybe like at least like make it seem that you're not just like trying to show off you also have like some humility or something like may maybe like like some like maybe point out some weaknesses you have or something like I, I did that kind of in some of my essays I'll show you guys what I did but the idea is you want to just make it so that the admissions officers like you as a person all right so those are the main tips I have for you guys but here are like the three steps just to like get an essay done first up jot down like in an outline form just to bullet down like what you want to talk about in the essay right you read the prompt you're like okay I want to talk about this thing this thing and this thing and then you just write that down that's all you do all right, so when you're happy with what you are actually going to talk about in the essay, right? Like if it's like YCS, you say like, I did this project, I like used to go because of algorithms and I've taken these classes, right? Then what you want to do is you want to actually turn it into a draft, right? And <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does this, but what I like to do first is I always think of the hook first. So second step, think of a hook. Because basically an essay without a good hook is basically a trash essay. Like, you could write as much as you want, like, as perfect English, like, really good stuff in your body paragraphs, but if nobody reads past the hook or, like, they get bored at the beginning, your essay is just not going to be good. And also your hook kind of sets the tone for the rest of the piece, so if you write your hook first, it's a lot easier to transition into the rest. So once you've written the hook, the fourth step... Bruh, I don't know how to count, god dang it. The third step is to actually write the rest of your essay, right? Just take your hook, transition into the rest, and then eventually come back to the hook, right? It always feels a little bit better if you end and begin on the same kind of note. This is not a hard, fast rule or anything, but it, it's nice if you have like a theme, right? And your hook basically sets the theme, so as long as you keep that throughout the essay, it's kind of interesting. Okay, and once you have a first draft, you revise it 600 million times, okay? Dude, I don't even know how I revise so much, dude. Like, I literally had to rewrite essays like five or six times. It was crazy. And sometimes I didn't even want to rewrite it, dude. Literally, I spent like four hours doing one essay and then I had to rewrite the whole thing. God dang it. Uh. But the idea is the first draft is going to suck. There's no way around it because you don't really know what works and what doesn't, what sounds good, what doesn't, what like actually like gets your point across properly and what doesn't. So you're event you're, you are for sure going to have to revise it a bit. And I would recommend getting someone you trust to actually look at your essays, right? Because 
<laughs> if you try to look at your essays, you're going to be like, I spent so much time on this. It looks good. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> That's literally what you're going to do. I guarantee it. Okay. If you think you're not going to do that, like you're just wrong. You're just wrong. Sorry. I'm sorry. But, but yeah, when you get like your parents or like some other person, like a good friend to look over your essays, then they could actually point out stuff that like you probably would not even care about or like you're just too sick of and tired of to actually like fix, right? And also if your friend gives you feedback or like the other person gives you feedback, you should probably take it because admissions officers will probably think the same thing, right? They're just humans too. And then once you revise it a couple times, eventually it'll be very, very cool stuff, okay? And then you can submit and then you're good. So let us now get into the actual essay that I submitted to MIT and Berkeley. Okay, so basically MIT has five essay prompts and basically these are what they are. The first one is basically how has your clubs sh and your community shaped you? Second is what field of study? So like basically for me, YCS. The other one is what do you do for pleasure? Um, the next one is how did you work to better your community? And the last one is how did you face the challenge and how did you fix it? And I think there was one more that was like, I, for I forgot the prompt, but there was one more. I'll probably go over it near the end. So, so essentially six. Okay. So for the first one, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? I basically jotted down what I wanted to talk about and I live in Silicon Valley, right? And my parents are software engineers. So I was like, okay, maybe I should talk about software engineers and how that like shaped me. And like, that's why I do math and CS. And then obviously like I do math and CS club and they were pretty influential in getting me into competitive, uh, competitive math. So I also wanted to talk about that. And then Silicon Valley, obviously you got all the big companies here. So tech is kind of important here. This one, honestly, like, this is another thing where it's, like, kind of cheesy. I, I honestly don't know how, how I got this one across, but, like, I kind of want to, that's basically, you, you want to keep track of what you want to get across in the essay ahead of time. Okay, so this is my first draft. It's kind of trash. I'm not going to read it. Honestly, let's just see if there's anything epic. Well, yeah, you can kind of see I was trying to add in, like, a kind of a joke into the, um, into the hook. <laughs> yeah, but this, this is kind of funny. I kind of like this hook, but it unfortunately did not make it to the final cut. Dude, <laughs> Math Count Squad was actually so bad. We, we literally had to wake up at like 7.30 and just do like three hours of math every single day of winter break. But it's okay, okay? It was worth it, okay? I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is, this is honestly true. I literally played so many video games before I did Math Club, but I will take it. Okay, but yeah, you can basically see I started with draft one, and now I'm literally, like, I completely changed up, like, what I was talking about even. So there's another one. Like, <laughs> you can even see I had to change up the full hook. And I, I tried to make another joke, but unfortunately this one didn't make the final cut either, god dang it. Okay, yeah, honestly this one I was not as proud of, but it's okay. Um, let's see, what else? Got a draft four, we got a draft five, holy moly. <laughs> I even got a bigger one, holy, that is a lot of stuff. Bruh. Okay, okay, here we go. No, this is not even the final one, dude. This is what, draft like six, holy. Okay, but this hook, this is basically the final hook that I came up with, and Basically, the point of the hook is to set the theme, right? And I wanted to talk about robotics because robotics is all about entrepreneurship. Well, no, no. <laughs> no, robotics is about, like, coming up with cool solutions. And then I use that to transition into entrepreneurship later. And I guess, like, showing you where, like, um, where my advice comes into play, right? Like, this sentence over here is kind of generic, right? Like, a lot of people know about Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics isn't an experience that you need to meet. So eventually, I swapped it out talking about my software internship and that kind of thing. Okay, so I'll just read you guys the hook because I think it was pretty decent, okay? So, at 6.30 a.m., I stumbled out of the car with blurry eyes. We had finally arrived at the kickoff of the 2019 First Robotics Challenge. At 3 p.m., I stumbled out of the car once more with somewhat less blurry eyes, this time to discuss my ideas for tackling the challenge with the team. Two months after coming up with that additional initial design, bro, I can't read. At that meeting, a fun fully functioning robot stood before us in all our glory. So... Basically, the hook doesn't really give that much information, but it's kind of interesting, right? Like, basically, in one day, we came up with all the design stuff, right? And then two months later, we had a working robot. That was so crazy to me. Like, you basically turned this, like, idea into a reality. And that's basically what I talk about in the rest of the essay, and that was kind of cool. Okay, the next one is YCS. <laughs> Dude, I originally thought it was, like, a 250-word. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a 250-word essay, but no, it is 100 words. That is why I made it so big. <laughs> Bruh. Okay, that was kind of a waste of time, but it's okay. But yeah, this is eventually what it ended up with. And basically, I try to make my hook a little bit, like, have some kind of voice as well, right? Like, drawing lines with your mouth is not inherently satisfying. Neither is drawing lines with your mouth for four hours straight. But after staring at a mess of wires and muxes in Logisim, drawing the final wire to connect my ALU to the rest of my CPU was probably the most satisfying thing I had ever done. Now, honestly, this was such a cool project because we basically made a CPU from scratch, it, like, using only transi uh, transistors in CS61C in Berkeley. So, so essentially the idea is you want to give specific examples that make your like, that make it seem unique to you, but also like 
it's kind of cool. Like, th they understand, whoa, this guy finds CS cool because he made this really cool thing at this class, and, like, I, I basically made the connection more clear here. Honestly speaking, I think the last two sentences are kind of cheesy, right? Like, with a little ingenuity and a few building blocks, we can build powerful software devices and more. That's kind of cheesy. I, did, I couldn't really think of a better way to word it, so if you guys could think of a better way to word it, please tell me. It's a bit late, but it's okay. Okay, next one. We know you lead a busy life full of activities, many of which are required of you. Tell us something you do simply for the pleasure of it. And this one was kind of easy for me, right? Because, like, um, like I've basically been doing music for a while, and that's, like, probably the main thing I do for fun. Like, other than watch YouTube and play chess. No, I'm kidding. I suck at chess, but I watch YouTube, okay? That's all I do. And we probably should not talk about YouTube, okay? Otherwise, that would be kind of sad, bruh. But essentially, we, you can see I have like three drafts on this one. Oh, so honestly, I feel like I'm just gonna, well, okay, this one's a decent essay. This one, I'm, I think this is one of my better essays, so I might read more of it. But my parents were used to me singing. Every time a song I knew started playing on the car radio, I would sing along at the top of my lungs. What they're not used to, however, were my first attempts at vocal training last year. To say the least, listening to me try to hit an A, high A, was far from pleasant. <laughs> it was so unpleasant that I kind of gave up at this point, but you know what I'm saying? It's okay. My office singing was yet another saga in my ongoing exploration of music. I started playing the viola in fourth grade, then transitioned to guitar soon after. I experimented with blah 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 blah, and <laughs> finger styling. Dude, my, my parents did not want me to put finger styling in, because it's technically not a word, but like the idea is you want to make it seem like you're actually talking to them, so that's why I included it in there. Okay, and yeah, you can basically see. As you might expect, my first attempt at songwriting didn't go smoothly. I spent hours trying to think of lyrics just to realize I would have to rap them to make them actually fit my chords, bruh. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was a pretty good joke, I gotta admit. But yeah, basically the point is you want to get your like personal experiences across and like make it kind of funny, ideally. Okay, prompt number four. At MIT, we bring people together to better the lives of others. <laughs> this one, okay, I will admit this was one of my cheesier essays, and uh, I'm not too proud of the hook, but it's okay. We will, we will go through it and explain why it's good slash bad. Okay, for this one, I think I wrote like five, yeah, five drafts. So essentially this one's talking about me helping out with the middle school math club. And basically the idea is like on the first day of my math club, I did not expect people to be chatting about Vieta's formula. And I did not expect to be swept up by the infectious enthusiasm, okay? <laughs> Dude, I probably told this story a hundred times, but I literally thought I was not going to get into math. I was like, math is for nerds. We're not doing this nonsense, but here I am, here I am. And that's basically what I talked about. And I was like, because people made me interested in math, I wanted to make more people interested in math, and that's why I am now, like, the, like, um, lead guy for the middle school math club here. A very epic stuff. Yeah, like, honestly, this is, like, very, very cheesy conclusion. I, I didn't, I couldn't think of something better, but it's okay. It is okay. Like, I kind of really don't like the last two paragraphs of this essay because it's just me, like, saying what I did, and that's kind of boring. Like, it's not funny, it doesn't make that medicine officer like you anymore, but, uh, I don't know. I couldn't really think of a better way to word it, honestly. But yeah, I think the first two paragraphs were good, though, because you have an interesting hook, you got, like, and you're basically getting your point across. But yeah, last two paragraphs, not so good. Okay, prompt five. Okay, this is my best essay by far. Like, I've used it, I used it for my UT, like, app. I was going to use it for Common App if I had to apply for Common App. <laughs> I used it in my UC essays, too. This one, like, this one is my favorite by far. And I get to mention YouTube in it, so that that's obviously the reason why, because you guys are my, my favorite guys in the universe, clearly. Okay, so let's read this dude. I think we should read the whole thing because this is actually kind of funny. Okay, everything was planned out perfectly in my head, okay? I would stroll to the front of the classroom, smile at the students, and greet them with an enthusiastic, how is everyone doing today? After receiving a resounding great, I would transition to my lecture on sickly quadrilaterals with a witty segue. Turns out my witty segue was fumbling a red expo marker from its magnetic tray, knocking both to the floor with a metallic crash. My enthusiastic greeting, a shrill high that sounded out all the out of place from a high schooler, was similarly unimpressive. Bruh. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. And basically, like, um, basically the idea is, like, I, <laughs> I was really bad at public speaking, and then I eventually started a Carrara, and we got better at public speaking. <laughs> Alright, you guys could probably agree with this one. <laughs> Dude, my initial videos, if you guys go watch them, they are so trash. But now, but now I'm decent. Okay, maybe my, maybe my videos are still trash, but like, they are a lot better than they were before, okay? But I got like a ton better at public feeding just by doing this whole like, YouTubing stuff, okay? And that is what I talked about, very nice. Okay, and now prompt 6 is like, yeah, this one was just cheesy. Like, I, I didn't realize it was a prompt until like two days before the deadline. So I just wrote something. It was not that good, but I will just read it. Basically, this is me in middle school, and I <laughs> kind of sucked at math when I was in middle school. But essentially, the idea is like, um, I, it's kind of cheesy. You guys could read it, but but 
it, it's true, okay? Like, I, I feel like this is a kind of important thing to me. Like, my philosophy is, you can't control how you do on stuff, right? The only thing you can control is how much work you put into things, right? So, like, I mean, don't, don't like, sweat it if you, like, do badly on the AMC, right? The only thing you do is work towards doing better next year, and obviously there are things that affect you, like, they're not in your control. So, yeah, I think that's just important to know. I don't think it's my best essay or anything, but I still think that the message is what I wanted to get across, so that is good. All right, so let us go to UCs now, and basically the way UCs work is you gotta choose four of eight prompts, and essentially, um, like, I try to pick prompts so that I would not have to rewrite that much of the essays, right? So, for this one, I could probably include something about music, and that's what I ended up doing, so, um, the majority of it is pretty similar, but I talked about a lot more stuff because the word limit is a lot bigger. Okay, dude, when you guys start writing college apps, you guys are gonna realize how annoying word limits are, but it's okay. So essentially, like, for this one, I started with doodling and stuff because, <laughs> dude, you should see my stats notes, they're disgusting. I, I, do I even have something here that I can show you? Dude, I don't even know, but, like, my stats notes are covered with stupid doodles. <laughs> it's crazy. And there's really, they're not filled out at all, there's no notes on them, just doodles. Dude, originally I put, yet for some reason, doodles of them filled all my calc with notes, but then, few of them, but then we realized, like, okay, maybe that shows that I don't pay attention in calc, and we don't want to talk about that. So yeah, you can see, like, I try to make a joke again at the beginning, um, and try to make it a little bit funny, right? But, but I think the rest of it just is, like, kind of, like, um, <laughs> standard, kind of. But yeah, I also talked about writing, like, I, I try to, like, incorporate humor into my writing, like, as a, as a general philosophy, so I talked about that too. And then this is, like, repeat from the MIT essay. Okay, and then the challenge one is the YouTube one again, so that is the same. And then this is CS, but this one I actually got like fully fleshed out because it's actually 300 to 350 words, so, I mean no, it's 350 word maximum, so let us actually look at this one. Holy, I, I wrote five drafts for this, what the heck? <laughs> Bruh, okay, well yeah, I, apparently I did. But essentially, you can see that it's like the same intro, like it's still like the kind of joking intro, and then I also included something about Harry Potter, because everybody knows about Harry Potter, That that's relatable, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I've, I've read the Harry Potter series like 10 times, it's crazy. But yeah, basically you can see, like, I basically used the hook to set up the tone, and then I talked about, like, okay, I didn't really like this because it was kind of me just, like, flexing random courses I took. But yeah, I basically talked about all the CS stuff that I did that is unique to me, right? I, I participate in CTFs, I, like, know a ton of languages, I've done a ton of classes too. So that's all unique to me, I don't think, like, that many people have taken Berkeley classes and have done their own personal projects and that kind of thing. So, that's basically what I was trying to get across in this essay. Okay. And you can see that I also try to make a comeback to the intro, right? Like, at the beginning, I'm talking about making the CPU, and then at the end, I talk about, like, the, like, going back. Like, I thought it was so cool building that CPU, but now I know that it's, like, actually only a part of what I could actually do with CS. And what have you done to make your community a better place? I think this is the same thing as the MIT essay. Let us see. Yes, sir, it is the same. There we go. Alright, so hopefully that was helpful. That's basically all my essays. Those are basically my main tips, right? Like, first, start early. Second, like, don't flex your resume, like, you already have plenty of ways to do that. And third, you guys should make sure to be genuine, okay? Don't be generic, make sure it is specific to you. And honestly speaking, like, the one rule that, like, rules them all is just try to make the admissions officers like you, right? Like, the only thing you had to do, the only thing you had to do through your essay is make the admissions officer want to accept your application. So, if you read through your essay and you're like, okay, this guy seems kind of yucky, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be friends with him, then you're probably not writing it right, okay? You should write an essay of someone you would want to be friends with. <laughs> that, that, that's a new way of putting it. Okay, I'll take it. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what else you guys want in the comments. But other than that, we are done. So, <laughs> thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.